Welcome back. Well, the former Conservative Deputy Prime Minister, Lord Hesseltine, uh, joins us now for comments uh, on what has already been an absolute blockbuster uh, of a reshuffle. Thanks for joining us on the show uh, this morning. Um, what are your thoughts uh, on the bold moves the Prime Minister's made? Uh, it's the best piece of political news for the government that I've had for many a long year. I'm absolutely delighted to see David back in the front line of politics. He saved the Conservatives from the last lurch to the right when he pulled the party back to the centre and won a general election. And um, he has exactly the sort of status that this country requires in what is a very difficult political international situation and a very difficult economic domestic situation. You say that he's got the status required, uh, but there's a certain amount of baggage with David Cameron as well. Um, what I can't get my head around is Rishi Sunak, at his conference, pitched himself as the change candidate uh, after years and years of failure, presuming including you know, the failure of David Cameron. How can he say that he's a change guy when he's bringing back a former prime minister? Because he's changed the direction from a lurch to the right back to the centre ground. But uh, frankly... The, 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 the nitpicking over the what uh, the Prime Minister said about the change. Last 10, 20 years. Uh, uh, look, the, the, this debate about whether Rishi Shumak should have said he's the change candidate, there's, there's no votes in that. Out in the great white British public, they're not discussing the minutiae of what the Prime Minister may have said or may not have said. What they do know is that Suella Braverman has epitomised a lurch to the right in the government, which is wholly unacceptable. And I, I was responsible for years for rough sleepers, and I, I spent a lot of time trying to find out what caused the rough sleepers, the, the broken homes, the second marriages, the uh, boyfriends that entice the girlfriends to London and then ditch them. This is human tragedy. And to, for Home Secretary to talk about lifestyle choices, I mean, she must have known that this would guarantee her headlines all over the place. You can't be so insensitive to issues of this momentum and, and expect to be Home Secretary, which is essentially a job of uniting the nation and calming the nation and uh, fighting extremes. How much damage do you think the former Home Secretary, Sula Braverman, has done to your party um, at the ballot box then? Well, you just look at the polls. And, uh, um, you know, I have never known in, in the world in which I live, which is a fairly predictable world of people, mainly conservative voters, perhaps of a, a rather older generation. I have never known such disenchantment with the government as that which I hear wherever I go, it, not, not to party political occasions, I don't go to many of them, but to the social occasions where I go. And there is just an appalling sense of we, this has nothing to do with us, this, these people. I mean, you know, it, it's depressing to a degree, but I have no doubt at all that David Cameron's appointment will send a ray of hope uh, where at the moment uh, there's been a rather dark background. I, I've got to say this, because there will be people listening to this interview who think, look, Lord Hesseltine, you are almost the epitome uh, of the kind of Remain Conservative. Uh, David Cameron as well, he was the guy who spearheaded the campaign. Of course you're going to be pleased uh, that he's back. Um, but what does that say to voters who voted for Brexit, who deeply believe uh, that David Cameron and yourself were taking the Conservative Party in the wrong direction and you're going back to those years? Oh, I, I'm delighted you asked that question because, of course, the British public now know that Brexit was a mistake. And they know what happened. They were told a pack of lies, um, led by Boris Johnson, but encouraged by Nigel Farage. Uh, and if you want that sort of thing, if you want to be a part of a society that is duped into uh, believing that the world is different to what it is, that there are opportunities which don't exist, well, then listen to the Boris Johnsons of this world. Listen to Nigel Farage. But uh, frankly... 
the Conservative Party that I belong to is the, is the Conservative Party of Churchill and Macmillan and Heath and Thatcher, who would have absolutely been appalled by the idea that we should turn our back on Europe. Um, and, and amongst many of the benefits of David Cameron's return to frontline politics is the fact that he is patently sympathetic to Britain's position in Europe. And uh, that's, that, I think, will be helpful politically to the Conservative Party, but uh, right for the best interests of this country, and particularly the younger generations who know that the severing of our relationships with Europe has done significant harm to their prospects. Do you think that's um, you know, helpful to the Conservatives at the next election, telling the 52% of people who voted Leave that they were duped, that they should just, if they still feel like that, they should just go off with Nigel Farage? You're hoping to get them to vote for you, aren't you? Well, i tell you what I, I think. That the, the real problem for the Conservatives in the election is actually the present economic situation, which uh, we all know and, and which is threatening people's living standards. And where people's living standards are under pressure, they vote for change. And that's the real problem of uh, this um, present government. It hasn't got time to change the perception of people's living standards. And the circumstances are, are not helpful. But one other area, if Rishi is really in the business of recasting the, the Tories, uh, he should bring back George Osborne and Greg Clark on the levelling up agenda, because there's a great uh, uh, future for the levelling up agenda. And those two ministers, uh, uh, George and Greg, they know more about levelling up and what needs to be done than anyone else in the Conservative Party. And there, this is an agenda which could change votes, and in my view needs to change votes, in the, particularly in the red wall seats, who uh, um, are very much listening to uh, effective policies to level up their often rather prejudiced positions. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Interesting to hear your perspective this morning. Lord Hesseltine, thank you. Thank you.